Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike and on today's episode we are going to be explaining the relationship between tidal volume and the bag valve mask. If this is your first time here and you're interested in watching more EMS educational videos just like this one, then please consider hitting that subscribe button below and enabling notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. Also, be sure to answer the question of the day in the comments below, what is your personal tidal volume when utilizing the BVM? The bag valve mask is just a positive pressure air delivery device. Typically, we're going to deliver assisted ventilations to patients who are unresponsive and don't have an adequate respiratory drive, or a patient who may be tachypneic or just breathing too fast. Yet, guys, I'm gonna let you in on a huge secret. We all suck at bagging. However, we believe that we are experts at this high acuity, low occurrence, or halo skill. The major theory I want to share with you in this video is proper tidal volume for your patients when delivering breaths via the BVM. How many times have you guys been bagging a patient and squeezing the reservoir until you see chest rise? Maybe you're just feathering that bag. Or my favorite, you're just squeezing it until it can't squeeze anymore, right? How much air or tidal volume are you giving per breath? Most of you haven't the foggiest idea. Why? Again, because we all suck. And it's no fault of yours. It's how EMS has chosen to teach us how to properly ventilate our patient. When we're delivering a breath of air, we're artificially filling the lungs with volume. The lungs are designed to stretch to accommodate this volume, yes, but only so far. If we're giving a volume larger than the volume of the lung tissue's ability to stretch, then every breath you give is essentially causing barotrauma to the lungs and the surrounding tissue. To debunk total reliance on chest rise, think about it this way. If we deliver breaths to a patient who weighs 50 kilos or 110 pounds, we should clearly be able to see chest rise. But now think about someone who's 250 kilos or 550 pounds and you're putting in just as much air or maybe more because you don't see chest rise through all of that adipose tissue, right? So maybe you're over inflating the lungs just to be able to see chest rise through all that adipose tissue. This is why from now on, you guys should be calculating your patient's tidal volume prior to banging your patient. Now, now, just hold on. I know exactly what you're thinking. Mike, you're telling me that I have to do math while my patient is suffering trying to breathe. Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you. As a paramedic, I'm not gonna give a medication without doing the med calculation first, no matter what my patient's presenting like. So do the math. Now, let's talk about the math on the computer specifically. So with this equation, our goal is to find the ideal body weight of the male and female patient. And there's specific equations that we need to find uh, and believe me, there are apps for this out there, but what I, and, and it's easy to go and utilize those apps, but I want you guys to know the actual math uh, and to memorize this math. So in case the app doesn't ever work, or maybe their math is off, you can actually calculate this for yourself. So the male equation for ideal body weight is going to be 50 kilograms, okay, plus uh, 2.3 kilograms for every uh, inch above 60 inches okay so um, we can easily write this let me do it this way um, height um, in inches minus 60 all right so for me this equation would read as 50 kilos plus 2.3 kilos times, I'm 5'10", uh, so 60 inches is five feet, so that would be 10 inches, okay? And this would equal 73 kilograms, okay? That would be my ideal body weight. Remember, we're not dealing with exact body weight, we're dealing with ideal body weight. So, if I was uh, a female, my equation would read slightly different, okay? It would read 45.5 kilograms, excuse me, plus 2.3 kilos 
times the height in inches minus 60 inches. Okay, it's exactly the same as the male equation on the second half minus the 45.5 kilos instead of that 50 kilograms under uh, the male. Okay, so this is how you are going to uh, figure out the ideal body weight every single time to figure out what the tidal volume is going to be on your patient. And once you have this ideal body weight here, you're then going to multiply that by the six uh, to eight mLs per kilo um, of ideal body weight, ideal body weight, okay, to figure out the tidal volume of your patient. Okay, and this, this here is very, uh, very key. Typically, I will use six uh, because it gives me a very good uh, starting point and I'm not over inflating those, that lung tissue. So if I did this for myself at six milliliters per kilogram of tidal volume times 73, I would come out with a tidal volume of 438 mLs of air. Okay, so this would be my personal tidal volume uh, for what we should be inflating my lung volume to. Now that you know the math, go and find the BBM that your agency uses and find out how much volume the reservoir or this part actually holds. An adult BBM may hold 1,000 to 1,500 mLs of air, while your pediatric holds about 500 to 700 mLs and your infant holds around 250 mLs. So if I was your patient at 438 mLs of air, you wouldn't choose to use an adult reservoir with me. You'd use an adult mask, but on a pediatric reservoir, giving me the appropriate tidal volume and not over inflating that lung tissue. I hope this makes sense to you guys. Many, many students I've taught this to are really amazed yet actually refuse to perform this in the field because of the reactions they may get from other providers. Please guys, do not let a good practice turn into a continuation of we all suck just because some people want to practice bad medicine. As always guys, stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video.